Hello to everyone. Uh, just uh, please uh, write on the chat if you can hear me well. Okay, super. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much for joining uh, for joining us. Uh, this uh, this is the second lecture of the series uh, how to make uh, a portfolio. We did it a portfolio in a fashion design and styling and then today will be a lecture dedicated on how to make a portfolio in the design area Oli, our program leader of the master in uh, uh, urban vision and architectural design uh, will manage this lecture so thank you very much uh, elisa uh, i leave you the stage thank you very much davide and thank you guys for being here with us this afternoon or morning, depending where you are. I'm very pleased to introduce you some tip and something that can be useful for you when you decide to send a portfolio. So there will be a presentation with images that I hope uh, will be um, good for you. I'm waiting just a second because the presentation has to be uploaded. And uh, in the meantime, I'm telling you that the presentation will be divided in three parts. So let's go to the first part. First of all, I am responsible of the Master in Urban and Architectural Design in Domus, but I will talk to you today also about uh, um, portfolio in product and interior design, because for us, the rules are very similar. And the first one are the four magic uh, words. Clarity, synthesis, storytelling, and personality. They seem to be very well known words for all of you, but sometimes they're not so uh, clear how to put them in the portfolio. So let's go a little bit and talk about that. First of all, a portfolio, we can quote the very famous uh, uh, statement of Miss van der Rohe, who says, Less is more. The portfolio is never about quantity it's always about quality because your portfolio has to catch the audience attention of course in very few seconds and so it has to be smart and of course very catchy and we will see how to make it so first thing you don't have to put everything uh, you have done in the past but concentrate on the details and the quality of it I'm seeing that there are a lot of people writing in the chat. Um, I haven't told you that, uh, of course, at the end, uh, I will answer all your questions. So don't worry if I don't answer it now. There will be time later on. Uh, so uh, what you have to do in your portfolio? First of all, you have to present your strongest work. It means that you have to understand which are your strongest work. And it's better always to start the portfolio with the most recent works. We will see more elaborated portfolio in which they can be divided by themes, uh, by, for example, scale project, etc. But by now we can say that it's always better to start with the last if the last is best. In any case, my suggestion is always to start with the project you think is the best for you. The second important thing is the fact that uh, you have uh, uh, to put the design index, index of contents. This is very important to guide the, the viewer through the understanding of your work. Uh, means that if you put a lot of projects and they're very different from each other, it is important to allow the, the audience to understand where they are and what we are talking about. Uh, it's very important to keep the contents easily rearrangeable. This is something for you, we don't see that, but you must have a way, a PPT, whatever you like, to be able to change and uh, to make uh, some adjustment all the time. How we have to show your portfolio, of course, what you have to show in your portfolio. First of all, you have to show your own identity and main skills. This is very difficult. One problem is we receive a lot of portfolio which they're very, they're very similar to each other. Uh, they seem to be done a little bit, you know, 
um, with very generic rules. And what we want to know, especially in a very visionary school like Domus, when we decided uh, with the jury if we want to accept a student or not, it's the person of the students. So we want to understand what you have about yourself of magic, of unique, and you have 100% certainly many things which are unique and they correspond only to you. Of course, the portfolio is about your strengths and your interest. Uh, the portfolio is not the moment where you uh, talk to us about uh, what uh, you have to improve. The portfolio is what you have already improved. And your interest, uh, which in my opinion are many times uh, um, explained by words, many times you tend uh, to write down a little letter or something describing you. And every time you describe yourself, it's again quite generic. It's like, yes, I like very much to do sport. I'm a competitive person. Uh, I like to cook. Uh, I like to watch movies. Guys, this is for everybody. Someone uh, that uh, uh, gets in love to you is not because you watch movies. It's this specific movie, it's which way you have watched it and what you find inside that is really unique for you. We will go more in details through that. Then, of course, it's important to talk about your career uh, uh, aspirations in the portfolio because it's the moment in which you first establish a relation uh, with uh, your employer and uh, in which you establish what you would like to be. The portfolio, it's 100% your life project. Of course, it's very important to keep it up to date, uh, but you know that, uh, and I'm sure you're very thrilled every time you finish uh, um, a project uh, to upload it in your portfolio. Uh, a very practical thing is the fact that you don't have to present only the final outputs. Many times we receive uh, uh, final images, uh, good renders, but we do not understand the process through which the student is arrived uh, uh, to uh, these final images. So uh, you should many times present also the design process, it means that uh, you must find a way to present from the brief to the final result, the final night, you know, the renders, the final collages, images. But what the project is about is the process that you there. Uh, the way and how you find it uh, unique and how you find the solution Yes, this part is very difficult. Choose and pick the right pages. At the end, you have, you have a very long presentation. Understand which are the more relevant parts. So in my opinion, for this very first part, I would say that you should remember that your portfolio is a communication tool. It should be as easy to read and you must be able to explain it. And of course, explain it like you have to explain to your grandmother Everybody has to understand that, not only your friends designers. And of course, you have to include projects that you are happy with and can identify yourself. So uh, important thing are cover page. There must be a cover page. Don't put it a generic cover page. I will show you some examples. The cover page is like the first uh, image you give about yourself. You have Instagram, you know very well how to lead, how to make your cover page, how to make your picture unique. It's the same thing. Your first cover page has to be unique and has to be very consistent with all the rest of your portfolio. There must be a short bio, short, remember, short, about your work experience, about your academic background. It has to be very short, readable. Nobody has time or more than five, six minutes to spend on person portfolio. And so it goes fast. You have to put very, very short, sentences and very very easy one there must be the index and with as we said so if a person is interested in go and find the first one specific project it's clear which page and where then there must be the selection of the best projects for this project a cover page title brief and project details year teamwork and role played this is very important many times we receive generic images final images but we don't know where the project is or there are very long storytelling about the project. Be short, put very simple data, you know, like a list, a very simple list where you put the title of the project, the very short brief, like two, three sentences maximum. And then, of course, some about the year, which year that project has been done. 
and the teamwork. Have you worked individually or with other people? And what was your role? Have you done final renders? Have you contributed since the beginning to the idea, the research, the development? Short, few sentences, and that's all. Like keywords, use a lot of keywords. Make it simple to be read. Nobody wants to read one page, page description of your project. Another very important point is to put in your portfolio competition, publication, special projects. Don't think that we do not calculate that. On the contrary, we love that. We love to see that you are so curious, so engaged, so passionate about design that you have done even more than what your school have required to you. At the very end, at the very end don't forget to put your contacts and links so everybody knows that you are reachable. So let's go. What we like to see in the portfolio to be able to evaluate you. Of course, sketch and maquette. Here, an example of a project in product design in which the student has decided to put some sketches, but already related with the packaging. So in one page, uh, we are able to see the first sketches the students has done, have done, and then the final image of uh, the packaging with the Pantone colors, so we understand through which criteria you want to establish uh, this, uh, um, this pro process. And uh, each page has to be made with the same kind of rules. It means that in the previous page, I got sketches, I got uh, a sort of mood board and the final output each page will have the same. So we don't move from one page to another saying, okay, but why before uh, he explained through a drawing and here there's no drawing? So you understand the consistency is very important. Of course, whenever you have done a final model or a final merchandising output, you have to show it. It's important. Even if you don't think you have a very professional final image of your model, of your mockup, uh, of uh, uh, your merchandising is important. Try to work a little bit on Photoshop if you're able, but try to put it so we know and we see which was the fast, the last phase of your project. Uh, then, of course, uh, it's important again to show consistency. So if you show a final, uh, a final model, there must be parts and very clear images. Don't try to put too many things in one page. You have to select what it's good to be shown. And every time I say, like if you were explaining to your grandmother. And so one page, one image, very clear. If it is good, it will work perfectly. And at the end, it's important also to show a little bit the components. So you see here in this portfolio, there were three images about the final model. Basically, this was a prototype. And the prototype was explained with the, the, the first image, the second close packaging, and the third one in which we see inside. The student in this case has no problem to decide to use three pages to show it because he knew that it was really a strong image to show and a very good one in reality. You see even the details and the open game, so we were we are able to see exactly how all the project works with something that has been produced, so we are able to follow it. But for other portfolios, it's very in general, it's very important to show diagrams and technical drawings. Guys, don't think that a final render is enough to let us understand if you have understood your project. It's absolutely relevant, as I told you before, to show the process. So every time you have to show uh, the, uh, as I said, here is important, diagrams and technical drawings, remember it. Here you see, they're both. So diagrams that allowed us to see how this inter inner space works. This is a project from a student in interior design. And of course, it's very important always to put uh, details like technical details. So we know that you are able to make this part. Every firm, every design studio want to have uh, uh, junior architects, junior interior designer, junior project designers able to make the whole process. So the technical drawings are super important, but don't just put 
generic technical drawings, you see this page, how much is consistent of the dominant of color, orange color, just to show that it's not just put like that in one page, it's not just uh, through for us, but has been carefully selected for us. The same, this page, which is from a different portfolio, but works in the same way. The, there are very short, there is a very short description of these, like explaining it is a G box, and then very clear images of how this space work from close to open. You see, even here, it's not full of things. There is a very simple watch page. We don't want to see colored pages uh, uh, below, etc., etc. Very clear, very simple, allowed us to see and to be concentrated on your drawings. And it will be much better. You see here, it's also about the fact that the student have decided to go, go and to refine using the tools of renderization to have very, very clear images. And each page, again, it's identical to the other. Till the axonometric view that allowed us to understand how the inner space work and where those new parts were put in this, which is an abandoned factory, but is not relevant for us. The relevant thing is it's super clear. Of course, it's working very well because it's an interior design portfolio. In an urban architectural portfolio, there would have been one thing missing, which is the contest because we work on an urban scale. So I would have seen this part and what is around, but always letting the background white, very simple, very clear, less is more. Another important thing, not only renders are valuable, you're not supposed to know anything about technical tools. You go in a master also to understand new things. So don't try to make one thing that you're not good with because you think it will be, I don't know, more wow. If you are better using Adobe, using Photoshop, in design, and you want to make collages, do it. It's the same for us. The important thing is that you're able to make consistent and clear images. As you see here, this was a great project that the students have done in the city of Palermo, in the south of Italy, in Sicily. And you see in this project, the final image is a collage. There are many things put together using a mixed technique. It's very important. We're not fixed on one thing. We want to see your identity and especially your creativity. Dom's Academy is an envisioning school. So show us your creativity, show us this space. As you see here, there are many, many different techniques put together. And again, each page is very consistent. The style is important to show us your style. An, an important example of style I'm showing you about one of my students of architecture in what consists on analysis and representation. Representation is fundamental, it's about your language, it's about the kind of drawing language that you're choosing. And this helps us to identify your skill, but allowed also yourself to understand who you are. In this case, this student made this incredible work on an existing architecture, just want to show us how she was able to reinterpret the architecture. This is the existing arch architecture in China, and those are the drawings made by this incredible student. She has decided to represent an existing building because it was so an important element of her research that she ju didn't just want to put a picture. She really wanted to show the fact that she has studied it and she has redrawn it. So see, see here how much she has worked making, of course, a perfect plan, a poster defining what she felt about this space, about this building. And of course, a postcard putting this uh, existing architecture in the city of Milano, showing us how it could have been putting in the place where she had to make her own final project. And at the very end, a beautiful model. This model, this is a model, is incredible to think, but uh, in during uh, when it's dark, uh, there is light inside. And so you, you see really the depth of the space, even if it is a very small maquette, but you see even the final picture, she took her time, she make it one image per page with a very short description, a very poetic description. Of course, I was thrilled about the project she did. Now, 
get to see some example. I'm sure you want to see which kind of uh, portfolio we like uh, to see in Domus Academy. So I will show you examples of product design of first. This is a portfolio you see from the very first page. And in Chanlin, she show us her identity. She is very colorful. And uh, she introduced herself uh, in a very nice way. Ciao. She knows that it's a portfolio for an Italian school, so she used Italian. And of course, one page about herself. You see here, there is no long description, very, very short phrases, very short things, and visually understandable using symbols. Symbols. Even her uh, picture, the ones she shows, the picture is also very important. Here, she show us herself smiling, but not in a, I would say, private image. This is a professional image, but it's very fresh, it's very personal. Even from the third page, I totally get the, uh, a little bit at least, uh, the kind of personality of this girl. She was absolutely outstanding and fantastic. And of course, you have seen there is also the index. You see how much each page is clear. There is the first, uh, introducing page for each project the number that put us back to the index and one image and a very short description and then we get inside as you see clear white background and here you see we have one part of the page devoted to what was the final project so when she was able to make it uh, here we see the final collection and on the other part, we see the inspiration. So we understand the final output, but at the same time, we understand the inspiration. And then, of course, another play page showing the merchandising pro process. So the visual appealing she has used about it, with the inspiration about uh, uh, fruits and vegetables. A second project, you see, each project is defined by a color. The colors are very important. Don't put too many colors in one page. Each project can have a different color. So mentally, we immediately go back to that or this project according to the uh, dominant color we have found there. In this case, it's red and is a super nice project about a portable lamp. Again, you see from one side, the final uh, output of it. So basically, uh, when she was able to uh, make it and produce it. From the other side, the process of inspiration and some technical elements allowing us to see that she's very good controlling all the part of the process. And of course, even the details that show us what was for her the strain on this project. In this case, the portable part. So the end is super important here. Again, third project, third color. This is a bed, but again, you see on one side, you see uh, the idea. From the other side, you see the final output and you see the technical element. This bed didn't went in production, but you see here that there are a lot of details, a clear page and very clear element. And we could go on for all the projects because they're all made in the same way. Each page is done in the same way. So it's very simple for someone who opened the portfolio for the first time. Don't spend too much time understanding how to read a page. A page has to be crystalline clear. Like here, we have everything. Idea, research, inspiration, technical details, and final output. Two pages, we have everything. But she selected very well what she wants to show us, and she made it. And we could go through the last, the, the other project, the last one. This is a chamber for smokers, and you see it's done in the same precise way. And so I think this is a very good example of the portfolio with the last page in which she gave us, using the same font, the same inspiration of the cover page, the few information we need. This is a very good example of a product design portfolio. Let's go now to another example of a portfolio of a student that came from a background in architecture and are specialized in interior design. In this case, the portfolio is in Italian already because uh, Chiara is Italian and she decided to put instead of the previous uh, portfolio with just one page and very short information, 
one page about a short text uh, talking about herself. But immediately after, there is always one page through which we can go very easily and visually to understand which are our skills, which are our experiences, the workshops, prizes she has won, and of course, her academic background. Those things are fundamental. Again, the background here is white. The uh, informations are very, very clear. The symbol used are readable. So it takes me one minute to understand her past in terms, of course, of a professional. And then we set the index. She has divided, and here the index is very important because there are a lot of products going through scale from architecture to interior design. For each page, again, she has decided to put one inch that allowed us to see what she's talking about, a description. You can make even a short description in this case, but the very important thing is the fact that before the description, she gave us the information in a very short way. So if I don't have time to go through the long description, I only have to, I have to read category, place, uh, time, and teamwork. And through those information, I'm done. I already have what I need. And then, of course, in this case, you see on the uh, bottom part of your right side, you see that for each page, she left a, a very small written telephone number and uh, um, also uh, her email. This is important because imagine that someone prints the portfolio. You send to a firm, they print your portfolio, they lose a page, and they have lost your contacts. You put yours in small, small font in every page is absolutely better. Here again, you see the page is very clear. She put a description. In my opinion, you can be even not, not using the description, the written part, but putting only the information. So here is the location, and here we understand the process through which to make this very new uh, hub on uh, um, uh, on the housing uh, side. And here she show us uh, also uh, the process with uh, uh, the program and uh, at the end showing perfectly uh, the plans, uh, elevation, renders, etc. It's important also the fact that she has shown us uh, the um, uh, plan section elevations for each side so we understand perfectly where we are and we understand the materials she has used so we know that she was in full control of each part of this project and at the very end she put a final render Chiara is very good at using of course uh, uh, rendering so it's perfect you see the second project is made in the very same way so I go through each project and I find for each page the same kind of information of the previous project. So I don't get lost. Here, there are even more information about her technical drawing skills, which are super important. I was very thrilled uh, watching, uh, seeing this portfolio because I saw and I said, okay, she's in full control of the technical drawing, which is very good. The same thing about each project, you see again, First page, description. Second page, there is always a plan, but being more urban scale, you see the whole big plot and, of course, uh, the area. This is important, but not put other very confusing images, just this one. And, of course, interior is part of the inner side, night view, beautiful night views. Nobody us usually put that. And then, of course, we can go a little faster here you see in this case in this project she decided to give more emphasis uh, to uh, the research and the idea so the program she has used uh, but if we go and we enter in the interior design projects nothing changed the scale of project changed but not the way she is presenting she's extremely consistent here we see we're talking about, about a temporary shop or a shop and here we have the plan we have the structure she has used, and we have a collage showing, of course, uh, what was this pop-up store inside, and some images that she wanted interesting to show which kind of space were created about, of course, in this case, furniture. And each project is made in the same way.
say uh, we, here we have uh, a project uh, again about uh, a small shop and uh, uh, how the space open and closed in different moments and also how it was integrated in the public space where he was put uh, to be more visible. So you see each project is done in the very identical way. And here again is an inner space in, done in an abandoned factory. I show you another project before made in the same place. Here was about creating a sort of uh, chill out space for people having sound experiences, but individual sound experiences. And so she has divided and made a very precise program of the old space was a big factory. So she explained here idea, research and program. And then she goes through a more detailed way of explaining how the program works for each day during which time for which kind of user and at that point she give us the idea of the space how it works and how it is uh, in that case she spent more time talking about the program instead of putting technical drawings but because she has shown us technical drawings in the previous projects so she can decide for each project what is the strength what is the most relevant part here you see there are beautiful section of the space to show us. And again, in this project, she goes back to very specific technical drawings, understanding in this case how the whole mechanism of the space works. Last page, again, here she put only her name because we know that in every page there is her number and email. Let's go now to the last project. In this case, I choose a project of my, one of my students in urban and architecture because I think it's probably the, pro the, the portfolio that shows more individual creativity. I love this portfolio because the student decided from the beginning to not give me a portfolio, but a booklet. It was already a book and he decided that he wants me was to decide him about Domus Academy being in Domus or not, he really wanted to show his capability through a kind of book, like, you know, a novel describing things. So from the very first page, I see what it is about and I enter and here you see he decided to give only very few information and put the barcode. So if you need to know more about me, if you like my portfolio, he's saying, you can just um, go through the barcode and you will have the full extended CV, uh, the full extended projects. But now I want to keep your attention and I want to give you what for me is more uh, envisioning. So he decided that each project was a chapter and at the end, uh, the final chapter would have been the whole landscape for each project. So he entered and of course for each project, because he has to put only a few images for each project, there is always the barcode. I tried the barcode and it opened to the full version of the project. So it's a very good idea. Also this one, I have doubts. I don't know, have you done technical drawings in this project? I open with barcode and I enter and I have the whole information about it and I'm sure. But here he really pushed a lot on the idea of catching my attention. And I can be bored very easy. So I was wow at the end of this portfolio because he immediately decided that he wanted to show projects showing me that he was able to control a very large scale. Here we're talking about landscape in a valley and every page is detailed. It means that I understand the scale, very important. And you see one drawing, one page, very easy. Understand what was about. He has to create a new uh, shelter for tourists, and again, it goes very fast to a second project done in Venice. And here it's shown us the whole process, basically uh, the uh, how he found the place, how we want to rebuild it, and one how is the last part. So there are like only three parts. You see, it's really working as a book, it means that one part is left empty. But it's not empty because he has, not, he has nothing, nothing to say to me. It's because he is extremely elegant in the way he's communicating to me. Look at this axonometry. It's outstanding. It's a beautiful axonometry that talks about uh, 
his passion and his abilities. So every project you see a little bit, the first page of each project in this case is adding one piece to the previous project to have at the end a kind of very long landscape. And it is unique. It's normal to make a portfolio like that? No. Did I love it because that was very far from normal? Yes, I was waiting for a project for a portfolio like this one. I was thrilled. Here again, for example, in this case, he decided to give more attention to a, a full plan of uh, the project and also making elevations. So I can understand a little better how it works. In this case, again, it's showing me, look the beauty of those drawings. Look at here and the capability to show me that is able to think in an urban scale. Give a portfolio for someone in, in this master in which you have to do with the landscape, urbanism, architecture and architectural details. And we insist a lot on the capability to make all those scales working together for the community, for the good of the community. One drawing like this one explaining everything about the fact that the students know what we are talking about. Look at here, another project, it started with the model. It's a beautiful, outstanding model, uh, enlightened from inside. Uh, it took me a moment to understand, yes, it's a, it's a model and it's a beautiful model, it's a beautiful picture. So you see, for each project, he has selected, again, the strength. He hasn't shown me everything. Less is more. He has shown what is the best for him. But allow me to understand, because after, there is this incredible act so they show me exactly how the whole space worked. And again, here I see it better. And we go for the last project in which he has shown just uh, the plans and this beautiful, beautiful section. So at the end, what he has left to me, it's uh, the final page of his portfolio, as you see here, is a component, a mix of all the projects that he has shown. Imagine at the end, if I will not remember a portfolio like this one, and this is very, very important. Last page, of course, uh, um, about uh, uh, information using always the same consistency, it was a book for him and he played like it was a book for the last page. So those were the projects I wanted to show you today to give you a little tips about uh, the portfolio. I've shown them very, very fast. And now I go back to uh, the chat because I'm sure you can have a lot of questions. So uh, probably um, uh, Davide already. Uh... Ciao, Davide. Mm -hmm. You can Ciao. tell me there are for me. Yes. Uh, uh, just a second, let me share video. Okay. Hello, guys. Uh, so just because I, I've seen a lot of questions uh, in the chat, uh, this lecture is uh, related on uh, how to create a portfolio in the design area. So I mean interior product and uh, architectural design. We did it for fashion uh, last week. And uh, we'll be available on our YouTube channel, I guess, within of today, maximum tomorrow. This one is just for the design area. So stop to a question about fashion. This is not for fashion because we already did it. So let's uh, talk about the question. Uh, um, I start they... David, from the very last one and I go up. Uh, yes, but uh, to be honest, we view all of the previous questions were related to fashion. So the first one is about the length. So how many pages approximately uh, they had to put in a, in a portfolio? And then you, you can go through the other questions. Thank you very much, David. Uh, yes, it's an absolutely relevant question about uh, the number of pages I've shown you. Here, average, I've shown you portfolios in which there were like uh, three, four pages for each project. The main and most important thing is about the choice of projects. Of course, if you have 50 projects, you cannot put 50 projects in your, in your portfolio. If you have just four projects, you can put more than three pages if you like, because there are not so many, so you can devote time. But the most important thing is about how you choose what you want to show. Many times uh, the images that you have are not good enough. So you have to spend time redrawing sometimes before putting in the portfolio. Very important, as I said, don't put too many informations in one page. 
less is more always. Now uh, I go to, can we place the handmade render sketches in the portfolio? Of course, uh, probably SR, you uh, just uh, um, get inside uh, uh, this blackboard uh, a little late because I've shown the first example about product design portfolio in which there were handmade sketches. They are absolutely important, especially uh, if you have good skills on sketch. Uh, yes, we like to see it. Uh, you can decide it. To make a unique portfolio, as I show you the last one, you can decide that you're extremely good at sketching, you're extremely good with hand, um, handmade drawings, make the portfolio through which, uh, and um, through uh, this, uh, and uh, balance it. it. means that in each project, you can use also this part. So this is a little bit up to you and up to your capability to understand what it's, uh, which are your best skills. Then I go, um, just one second. Uh, when you mention the career aspiration, what exactly would you expect uh, as the answer? Uh, no, I mean, uh, uh, career aspiration means that whenever you um, present yourself, uh, you know what you would like to be, it means that uh, uh, when you describe yourself, you can put uh, four or five sentences in your portfolio is always good to know that uh, I don't know you would like to go and work in a firm because you need to have more experience on teamwork or you want to go to work in a firm because you would like uh, to uh, work more on uh, the technical drawings uh, you would like uh, to become uh, an interior architect with specialization in uh, um, uh, retail or you would like to become more an urbanist whenever you send the portfolio it's always better to uh, give a little more detailed information because saying I want to become an interior designer is a little bit generic you can add some more information about that saying yes I would like to become an interior designer but I'm very keen on the part related uh, to uh, uh, housing or of course uh, other elements hospitality. Uh, I would like to develop more of my skills on the hospitality side. So we already know that. Uh, everybody knows about that. So it's better. Then I go. How many projects will be ideal? I, I already answered these questions. I said, uh, depend on the number of projects you have. I've shown you those portfolios. Average, they got from six to 10 project each portfolio. So you can put 10 projects in my opinion, but you have to select very well what you want to show for each project you're showing. If you like, you can post me here if you want me to go back and to show you again one of the three final portfolios that I've selected to show you. Then, um, uh, can we get a call, uh, sorry, uh, what uh, uh, would be the core of skill in product design? Like, for example, is in urban is about the scale. Is product about human and user? Uh, I've shown you, yes, of course. Uh, I don't think there is a main difference uh, in... Uh, 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 I show you the portfolio of um, product design, the final portfolio, this beautiful portfolio. Uh, they were projects very different from each other. One project was about a set of a table objects. Another project was about a, a small chamber for smokers. Uh, so they were different in scale. They were different in terms of uh, uh, kind of uh, final uh, user. Uh, but they were very consistent in terms of the way the work produced thought. Uh, the research was, was clear. So I'm not expecting that uh, a young uh, designer already has a precise, precise target. It's more for your, uh, what you would like to develop here. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, I guess it's the consistency inside each project that is more relevant. Then, of course, if you have done more projects about uh, uh, social uh, uh, social issues so, or, for example, yes, social elements, you can just train in your portfolio. Uh, there are a lot of architects, for example, or a lot of product designers that have worked a lot for communities, uh, make, uh, I don't know, uh, um, 
self-made projects uh, in which they just design, as, design the process for poor communities. This is a plus because shown already your interest and your identity. So yes, it's good, you can do that. Can we get a copy of this presentation anywhere? Uh, I'm sure there will be, and I'm sure that I can tell you. I'm, uh, I, I think in any case, this is a webinar, and uh, so you can, uh, we, uh, Davide will answer it later. When you mentioned, oh, this I've already answered, how many projects will be ideal? I already answered. How many sketching can be in a portfolio? As I told you guys, I cannot decide. This is up to you. It's about a balance. If you have very good sketches for each project, you can put in one page a sketch for each project. I have nothing against it. Against it. it depends on the quality. The portfolio is about the quality, not the quantity of images you are giving. Imaging is like a makeup on a face. Makeup is about balance. If I put too much lipstick, if I put too much uh, mascara, if I put too much of everything, it would be too much. I have to balance. It's the same thing. It's about your outfit, what you choose every day when you go out. There is a moment in which you decide what is the right balance, what you want to wear. The portfolio, it's you. The portfolio is a very important part of you, especially because you are creative people. So you have to understand the balance. The two important things are, the portfolio has to be readable by everybody. So like your grandmother, has to be able to understand your portfolio. And it has to be readable in a short time, few minutes. So don't put too much, select the best. Then uh, print or digital, what format is best to go for? Screen, okay, here again. I've shown you the last project, the one in urban and architecture, it was both. The barcode allowed you to go on the uh, digital portfolio that is uh, of course 100% completed because there are everything in the digital one you can decide to put also uh, projects with more more pages but the idea of the portfolio that I've shown you the last one is the fact that he printed it as a booklet and he sent to the firms he wanted to work with and so people has to open and be like uh, interested and catched by the unique format of this portfolio and open it and then go with the mobile and the barcode knowing more information about the single project so again it's up to you there is never a precise rule it's exactly because it has to your identity i've seen great portfolio made through videos by people that were very good using videos and they sent through videos inside there was everything but made by a video catching video super funny video then you have also you decide the kind of tone you want to use in your portfolio you want the portfolio to be more ironic you want the portfolio to be uh, a little bit more formal uh, a little bit more dramatic depends on you so i not give you the answer certainly when you, if the question is you want to send a portfolio to domus academy because you would like to enter in domus academy and you want to be evaluated you have to present a pdf of portfolio uh, and then you can put a link also in which we can go through your uh, digital portfolio with more information but what we want to have is the pdf that a little bit uh, uh, is like the printed version, but we see on screen, but it's the same. Uh, then I go. Um, I have a question, which is, do you guys prefer a fixed format print or PDF? Is the same. I've already, uh, I've already um, uh, replied to it. If you already have a website, of course, you send the PDF because uh, we need a format, a specific format, and the enrollment uh, as precise rules because there is a jury, we have to evaluate each portfolio carefully. But then you can always put the link to your website, and I'm always glad to see the websites of people, to see what, here, it's about being creative, being unique, to show us your, your unique part, really, how much you already are envisioning and why you would like to come to the most envisioning school in the world. This is what it's about. So I can give you my personal ideas, like the last portfolio I've shown you, which is more risky 
because it doesn't follow the normal rules of the portfolio. I love it, yes, but this is personal by me, my Elisa, because I like to see unseen things. I like to see your personality. I'm fascinated by your personality, guys. The Domus Academy is a school of people coming from all over the world with extremely unique personalities. Of course, I'm fascinated by that. But then it's a little bit up to you, the capability to understand which part of yourself you want to show through the portfolio. Then, um, can you tell a little about, oh, no, sorry, I can't. Do you give importance to the hand-drawn sketches? Yes, I already answered to that, of course. It's very important. One thing is, um, in, in the portfolio, put sketches of projects. Many students send us sketches of, uh, I don't know, uh, portraits. Uh, this is not relevant. We are talking about a design school, so if you put uh, good sketches, hand drawings of projects, is great. If you put hand drawings about, uh, I don't know, uh, a marina or a landscape, uh, but not a project on landscape, yes, I like it, but uh, I cannot understand how much this hand drawing helps you in the design process. So everything has to be related to the projects and to the to the design. Uh, as I'm a fashion student, no, sorry. Can different projects be incorporated in one portfolio? My dear, you must. Uh, you cannot put only one project in one portfolio. Each portfolio is called portfolio because it's a collection of more than one project. And each project has to be shown with a selection of images that you already have and showing the best of you. Then, it is necessary to use any particular font size. Uh, I like uh, Kriti this question very much because I read it uh, uh, because I want to, to reply it carefully. It is necessary to use any particular font size for the text and headings and any other information. If so, kindly mention the uh, specifications. So, the font, the visual aspect, the layout are like the projects that you put inside the portfolio, part of your aesthetical choice, part of your style, part of your personality. So, yes. I'm very curious about the kind of font, the size of font, the number of images you are putting, but is exactly what I'm expecting you to pick, not to me to tell you. It's the opposite. I need you to make this choice. I need you to understand which is your favorite font, which is the one that you think is better with the style of your projects, with your personality, with the consistency of colors, with everything. And I repeat, the consistency and less is more. So you mention a very important part because it is super relevant to pay attention to details. A font, it's not a superficial detail. I'm a kind of obsessed person for details. And I think it's a value being a designer. So try to do the same. Try to be obsessed somehow. Try to try many fonts. Try many uh ways to do your portfolio and at the end choose the best so you see the question was fundamental but i cannot give you a, a unique answer the answer is that i'm curious to see uh, whenever you will send us uh, your portfolio which font you have choose then uh, what is that one thing you expect in the portfolio okay uh i think uh I want to see who you are. So I can tell you what I don't want to see. Generic uh, layout, generic images, generic description. Uh, I need to see your personality. So I'm expecting something that I haven't already seen. But we are talking about creativity. So there are elements that you have to put in the portfolio. I mentioned it technical drawings, sketches if you have, final models if you have, very important for architecture, plan, section, elevation, that show us that you are able to, and also interior design, that you're able to make them, then renders, collages, posters, whatever is the technique that you like, you use it. 
So we need to understand that you are ready for a master program in a prestigious school like Domus Academy. So this is important that you put elements about what you're able to do. So which kind of program you're able to use. If you are great in 3D Max, you will put, of course, some great renders on 3D Max. If you are more good in Photoshop and in design, probably you will have outstanding collages and poster. If you're super good in technical drawings, I will have super precise plans and elevations. If you're able to make an axonometry, give me axonometries and put everything in an order that is understandable also for your grandmother. So we will be sure that everybody can understand. Those are the things that I'm expecting to see in a portfolio to be able to evaluate you. Then there is something that you have to put more, which is the choice of your personality, the kind of font, the number of images, the number of projects, the order of projects can be, as I suggested, from the most recent till um, the, the, the very old one, but depends also on the quality of them, which kind of image for each one you want to choose. You see, there are many, many elements you have to consider about, but I repeat, for me, if I have to select the basis are technical drawings, uh, collages, uh, um, if you, and uh, you know, I don't think if you're not able to make uh, great renders, uh, uh, you are not good for Domus Academy. On the contrary, uh, you will find other ways. You will find other skills. You will work more with collages, with posters. So don't worry about that. The important thing is be very careful about each page. The quality is the most relevant thing. You have really to be careful about the quality of your portfolio. Each page, go read, watch it again, spend time on it. Be sure that the balance of parts are good. Be sure that you haven't put too much and it will be good, of course. Then, hello, madam. I noticed that the portfolios you displayed did not have much of a write-up, so it is not really requested. You are right, it's not requested. On the contrary, it's a design school. You talk through design, so your language, our drawings, our renders, all those things is your language. The writing part, as less as better. What I'm expecting are relevant informations, like, for example, as I told you, the year, the group, the teamwork, your specific part of this project, uh, those information, the place you have made the project, those informations, yes, for each project, but a long description for each project, no, is not required because each firm has a very short time to go and see your portfolio. Each of us receive tons of portfolio every day. So we want to see something that catch our attention. Uh, and we, if we have to read too much, uh, we lose some interest. And especially we think that you're not able to talk through design, which is the core idea of Domus Academy. Thank you for your question. Can a product designer portfolio also include some projects related to in other design disciplines or perhaps some illustration of artworks. Uh, okay, for the first two parts. Yes, absolutely. You can have, uh, we, Domus Academy is a cross disciplinary school. So there are people coming from background in fashion, going to design. There are students with a background in urbanism that goes for product design. So there's no rules. And of course, it's about the quality of your projects. We evaluate the quality of your projects and your skills. Uh, technical skills to get inside the school. So after you can have a different background and be accepted in a project, in a master program, just because your projects were consistent and we understood you are ready for this kind of master. For what concern artworks? Uh, no, not so much. It means that, uh, yes, if you have done uh, in the past uh, uh, the artist, and so 90% of your work is about being an artist or you have been a photographer before, yes, you can. But if you are talking about uh, um, artwork that you have done in your free time, I never suggest you to put that. It's better to put illustrations, more illustration about your projects, of course, yes. How about other projects outside our study? For example, someone in an interior design, but she has a capability on designing wedding card. 
could it include its portfolio? Um, yes and no means uh, the example you have put, uh, I don't think is 100% related. Uh, if you mean by, uh, um, by designing uh, uh, wedding cards that you have skills as a graphic designer, yes. But you sh have to show us that you have great skills as a graphic designer. So be careful to put something uh, that has a good quality. Always, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So of course, if you have skills in other domain of design, you can always show us that the important thing is the quality you are using for each project you show. So yes, multidisciplinarity is more than more accepted. Be sure that it's in the good quantity. Again, you uh, make uh, some painting in your free time. It's not probably so relevant to put in the portfolio. You have done a school like an uh, art school and you have done uh, painting for 15 years of your time. In this case, you can put a couple of your best work. I hope you understand the difference here. Uh, then. Uh, I already explained about the size of the portfolio, what are the points that HR or recruiter looks for a portfolio. Uh, well, I think I've described it uh, till now, honestly. So I just finished to say them, technical elements, uh, renders, if you're not able to use very well renders, uh, so you use collages, axonometries, any kind of re representation skill use as possible way, your capability to, to, make, to be part of a teamwork, your many things related to the fact that you are able to show the, the projects in a very clear way, but then it's a little up also to the kind of uh, uh, firm or company you're applying. It's very important because before sending a portfolio to understand what, uh, which are the core messages of the company uh, you want to send to your portfolio to because uh, you have to match a little bit that. Uh, sometimes I say to my students also, don't change your personality. If uh, your portfolio really responds to who you are, uh, it's better sometimes to receive uh, a negative answer from a firm you would have uh, worked with, but uh, he, knowing from the beginning that it could have been a match because uh, you know that your personality goes on a different way. So this is also important to be honest in your portfolio, to show really who you think you are, not to just to respond to the needs of the market. Um, can all the projects provided in the portfolio be diverse? I don't understand very well this one, honestly. What do you mean in different topics? I show you only portfolio with projects coming from different uh, topics. Uh, uh, in the one of product design, one was a set table, another one was a portable lamp, a third one was uh, I glue for smokers. Uh, in the interior design project, I've shown you projects about housing, projects about uh, uh, shops, uh, projects about communication. So yes, of course they can, but I hope I, under I understood your question. Can the portfolio be physical medium? Yeah, uh, okay, so that happened to me, uh, the fact that, if you, I don't know if you're talking in general or for Domus Academy. If you're talking for Domus Academy, that happened to me, that someone really sent through the post uh, at the portfolio, but because it was uh, a diary with pop-up images inside, something that I still have, and that was astonishing. I didn't even have to go to see, uh, to have other information about the student. When I opened and I saw this diary with all the uh, skyscrapers making, made in pop-up and sketch made drawings, technical drawings, etc. I said, wow, this is super unique, of course. So if you like to send a physical portfolio, uh, I have nothing against it, but again, it's about what you're sending. If you just have to send printed pages of what I could have seen uh, online, honestly, send me, don't, don't spend time, send me. If it is something unique that you can show only uh, via post, yes. Yes, of course, yes, I say yes. Uh, as a, 
as a jury, what is your expectation from the student in the portfolio? Well, I already explained, I, I already answered this question. Uh, others, uh, sorry, I'm a little bit, uh, Already answer, I guess, all the questions here, Davide. Yes, sorry, uh, because we have uh, five minutes. So um, I don't know if there are other questions, but uh, more or less are questions uh, that you already answered, if I'm not mistaken. Elisa? I'm here. I'm reading. Okay. Uh, I, I answer that there are questions that are repeated. I mean, yes. Before, so. Yes. So, guys, let me tell you that this uh, presentation is recorded, so will be available uh, really very soon on our YouTube channel. And there was a lot of questions, uh, and uh, so mm, we will have uh, uh, maybe in a in july another session of uh, this uh, portfolio review let me say and uh, because uh, mm, it was a really very interesting and uh, i've seen a lot of questions uh, so let me say uh, thank you very much uh, elisa i don't know if you want to say something more yes i would like to thank you all the students uh, you ask very important questions and i'm super super glad about your curiosity uh, your curiosity what is more relevant for us and your personality so uh, a little bit be full be unique and uh, don't be scared to send us something that it's a little bit out of the box i think best things happen only when you are out of the box so thank you very much davide for this opportunity thank you angela ambrogio also uh, for being here with us today the Thomas academy team and thank you especially the students for being uh, with me and asking those uh, fantastic questions i hope i answer everything thank you again davide for the opportunity thank you thank you very much elisa and uh, thank you guys uh, i hope to see you soon bye bye ciao